Welcome back to No Strings Attached Street Ministry. This is a continuation on our uh, How to Live Out of a Van series. Uh, this is uh, series number two, episode number two. Um, this one is, I'm going to be talking about your van build out and what you can do to build your van out and you can go as expensive as you want in this area or as cheap as you want now the first thing I'm going to do is talk about the essentials of what you actually have to have well the as we talked about the essentials you know for the ones that are in really tight budgets and can't afford a lot we're going to talk about the biggest thing that you need to do is truly do an internal um, investigation on how you live your life and do that how you live your life in your house where are you at 90 percent of the time when you're in your home if you're the type of person that goes in their bedroom plops up on the bed sits there with the computer on the bed you know with the laying on their belly playing on a computer all day and all night or if you know uh, sitting there laying down reading a book you know 99 percent of the time of your day then what you may want to consider is building a bed um, if you um, are the type of person that really spends your your time uh, sitting up most of the time or sitting at the kitchen table where you do most of your activities then you may want to build a bench with a table or you can do like me now when I looked at myself I figured out what I would do in, in my situation when I'm at home I basically live in the living room and now I'll sit on the couch on one end of the couch which is usually the left side and um, I'll use my little table I've got a little like one of them little secretary tables you know the pull in out of in when I'm set up and that is for my computer and I'll pop it on there and I'll you know I'll pull it up close and I'll do my computers and stuff sitting right there and I always sit with my feet up on the side hunched over on on the armrest of the chair and my, my feet are always up tucked up underneath, underneath me sort of on the side and that's how I sit that's just how it's comfortable for me it's not pulling a lot of pressure on my back and so forth and on my injuries. So that's where I usually find the best situations for me. Sorry about this wind. It's a Sunday down here. And boy, I tell you what, it has picked up the wind. Hope it's not coming through on your video. But anyway, that's how I normally sit anyway. And I'll spend probably most of my time right there. And let's say during the you know afternoon after watching a little football or something like that or you know they doing guy stuff you know or if I get tired and well I'll lay down and take a nap and usually where I take a nap is right there on the couch so I'll just roll over and I got me a regular pillow and I'll put my pillow up at the other end of the couch and stretch out and I sleep on my side and I sleep on my right side. It's just, I know they say you're supposed to sleep on your left, but anyway, I'd like sleeping on, I'm always backwards, but I sleep on my right side. And, um, I mean, then I'll, I can sit there and take a nap and I do just fine. But, uh, my problem is, is I can't get eight hours of sleep every day because of my injuries. I, I hurt so bad and I, I, it wakes me up about every, only thing I can sleep is about every two to three hours at a time. So while I'm in the van that works out actually very well because of the situation I have um, even during the day if I'm just sitting in the van just horsing off on a computer which I'm trying my best never to do you know when during the daytime especially and uh, during the daytime I'm out and about doing things and you know living my life to the fullest I could possibly live and I'll work my ministry up to about 9 30 10 o'clock at night and then but when I do go in and I climb back in the back of the van then I'll uh, hop up on my couch and I'll bring my computer and I have a little desk that I made for you know that hangs off the door and it reaches over on you know over to the um, 
you know, to the couch and I can sit there and I can use my computer. And most of the time I use my computer for just about everything. Um, it's my computer. It's my music. It's my, um, it's my movies. Uh, I streamline, uh, I, I can stream Netflix and Hulu and, um, uh, all these other programs on right off of my computer. Um, I can, um, watch DVDs. I can go to Redbox, you know, like at Walmart and stuff. They got these old Redbox machines down here in the South. I don't know if they're all over the country, but over down here in Florida they are. And you can stop in there and you can get a, a, you know, a DVD for like a buck. I mean, it's not a lot of money. Uh, you can buy your own DVDs. I've probably got 500 DVDs at the house. But I've got a case that's about, oh, it's probably about maybe a foot and a half wide by about a foot and a half deep or so. It's a briefcase, big heavy-duty metal briefcase. And inside of it is a binder, and it's got sleeves in there that I can hold like eight. Yeah, no, 12. Yeah, there's six on each side. Six, they're like sleeves and, and pages, and they're plastic pages. And I have six on one side. I can flip it over and have six on the other side. And they'll hold the DVDs in those slots. And it's probably got, I probably got enough 500 different sheets in there. I mean, I, I this thing is totally loaded. And also I got one for my music as well. So that way I can carry my original CDs on my music as well. But that's, and that's how I, I found them was actually to put in for my uh, karaoke music type things. But uh, that was back when I was using the actual CD drives to run that. But uh, now everything is all digital. But, um, yeah, I mean, today's market, you can even go and put your whole collection of DVDs even on a thumb drive or even on a uh, on a extended drive, uh, like a terabyte extended drive. That's how I have my stuff set up now is on ex um, external terabyte extended drives. And you can spend maybe 175 200 bucks for a really, really good one. Get like four terabytes. I mean, I can put a ton of movies, ton of videos on there, and I've never really filled it up, even come close. So, you know, you can do that as well. But back to the build of the van. So I figured out in my in my the way that I am, I'm usually sitting on the couch most of the time, or I can even sleep on the couch most of the time. So the what I, what I've done is I've ripped my van apart five different times. And reconfigured first thing I had was a bed that I jacked up about it was probably about man, about 30 inches tall you know off the floor and uh, put like a queen size mattress on it you know like a 10 inch you know memory foam mattress and everything else and and honestly I hated it and I loved the bed the bed was the most comfortable bed I ever had but what I hated about it there was a few things that I didn't like the biggest thing that I didn't like is that I every time I was in the van, I always was having to lay down. And I just never could get comfortable in a sitting position. And uh, so that was one of the big things. So I found myself, and any time that I was just sitting, I was usually just sitting in the front seat of the of the truck, you know, the driving seat of, of the van, and figured I'd do most of my stuff right there. Well, I didn't really care for that as much. And so I ended up finally eventually just ripping it out. And, you know, I, I built it. it. I mean, I'm a big guy. So, you know, with the movement and stuff and all the stopping and starting and everything else, it just seemed like the tall legs. It just, you know, I, I kept having to put it back together a bunch of times, tightening it up. Because it would squeak and carry on. It was ridiculous. So then I decided to lower that. So I went in there and I cut the bed, you know, I, I cut all the legs off down to about 12 inches and ended up actually removing the legs and setting it on milk crates. Just taking my frame of my bed and everything that I made for my bed and put it on four milk crates. And you know what, it actually worked better that way. Yeah, I lost a lot of storage, you know, when I went down that low. But that, you know, that's when I realized and I, I was really depressed because of all the stuff that I was carrying, you know, and I had to lose all that and get rid of it. But the biggest thing that I realized about all that is when I started pulling it all out, it was there for probably two years or better. And 
90% of that stuff underneath that bed, I never even looked at since the day I put it under there. So is it really worth carrying all that around? I never came across an, a, a time or a, a, a situation that I actually needed to pull it out. So it made me rethink even what I even packed, you know, and took with me. So what I ended up doing, I mean, I, I thought about, I says, all right, well, it'd be nice maybe to have a recliner, you know, like one of the big lazy boy recliners. You know, that's a, that's a very good idea. If you sit in a recliner at home, you spend most of your time in a recliner at home, consider a recliner. You don't have to have a bed if you sleep in, if you can sleep in your recliner. Most people can. So just what I say is if you get a recliner, buy the best you can buy. Get one that is extremely comfortable, not all broken down and where it makes you sore. You know, and anything you buy for the van, always spend quality. Remember, quality is a lot more important than quantity. You know, it's what is because you buy it once and you're happy with it and you're tickle pink and it's going to hold up forever. So never worry about buying quality. Um, but that there is another you know thing that you can do. Uh, in the back of the van at that point, you can pop your recliner right in the side doors. You know, right up again, put it right up against the back of your passenger seat. You know, facing towards the back, hang your TV off the back, you know, off the back doors or something. And you got the whole van, all the room you could possibly ever want right there. You, know, you can put anything in there. You can put a sink, a toilet, or whatever you want to do out there. You can build the rest of it out and be very comfortable doing that. You have a place to sit, put your shoes on, you know, get dressed. You can stand up, whatever you can do. You know, so there's a lot of things you can think of that way. But, uh, and then another way is the cheapest way is just the standard air mattress. Honestly, just a plain old cheap air mattress. But like I said, quality is the best. So if you can afford it, get one of those kind that automatically blow up and you know that has the you know the pump on them or have a nice battery operated pump that you can use to you know to pump those up but get the best you can afford and the at the best price you can get and make sure you have a, a some kind of an electrical pump that runs off of 12 volts or batteries that you can plug into your cigarette lighter or whatever to pump that bed up believe me you don't want to sit there and get in a a major you know a major head rush by trying to blow up a queen size mattress get the smallest bed you can possibly get that you need to, to sleep comfortably yes if there's two of you of course then you're gonna have to go with like a queen size or something that can handle the two of you but most van people are actually single people that's out by themselves and in that case, honestly, you don't need a lot, you know. Now, a standard bed size is what? It's about 35 or 38 inches wide by, what, 60 inches long, probably. That's what I would estimate a, a regular twin-size bed to be. Uh, I'm not sure, but you can get the figures on that. That would be the maximum that you would. That would be luxury. But, uh, you know, and but you don't need all that. I mean, lay down measure from shoulder to shoulder measure your couch measure the area of your couch if you can sleep comfortable on your couch that's how you have to build your bed and that's all you have to build for your bed <coughs> <coughs> so my couch i built a 28 inches wide from the back of the cushion to the front of the cushion on the you know, on the seat same as in the height the mattress that I used came off of a day bed, which is one of those, um, oh, what are they call the things you put in the kids' room, you know, the little, the little fold-up day bed things. Um, but that's what I got, and I got that at, at Big Lots, I think it was. I bought the best mattress they had when I had one, and the guy thought I was totally crazy when I bought it. I says. Oh, I just want the mattress. I don't want the frame. Just all I need is the mattress. You can keep the frame and do whatever you want with it. <laughs> I thought I was totally nuts. <laughs> but it was cheaper to buy it that way than it was to go to a mattress shop and buy it the other way. 
Now, I don't do a lot of things online. I'm sure you can find different mattresses and things online a whole lot better than I could. But I just not one to do a lot of shopping and stuff online. I just, I just don't. I'm an old school guy, so, you know, we don't do that kind of stuff. But anyway, and there's mattress places all around the country, and I checked with a few of those, you know, and, you know, like Mattress Firm and you name it. There's a few other brands I think I remember, you know, checking on, but everything was so expensive, you know, I just couldn't afford it. And it wasn't really what I wanted. And when I bought that mattress, actually, I ended up buying the one mattress that I did buy. I bought it from um, Walmart and it was one of those roll up ones that come in a box and then I cut it to the size that I needed it so after it expands and, and blows up and everything you can do just fine uh, if you're going to have any kind of a mattress and you want a good mattress I would suggest that but make sure you get at least the 4 inch if not more so you know that's going to and depends on how heavy you are I'm a big guy like I said the 4 inch I would you know I would That'd be the minimum that I would use. Because, you know, all the other ones, I hit the wood. I ended up sleeping on the wood by the time I wake up the next time, you know. And I'm down on the hard wood. So, that's why I would recommend going with the bigger one. But, yeah, if you're some petite little girl that's only 120 pounds, you, know, you probably can get away with maybe two inches, you know. And be just fine. But, um, consider, you know, what you have. And always look at buying the best quality that you can. And if uh, you need four inches, another option is to buy a a two inch mattress because you'll probably buy them cheaper than you can to four inch, and take it and cut it in half. You know, cut it down for the size that you bed. Do your measurements and figure out your best option of what you can do. But if not, you can have to struggle with just an air mattress. That's fine. The only thing that I didn't like about air mattress, well, there's a few little things I didn't like them, I and I'll get to those. One thing I didn't like about it is that in the van, as you're climbing in and out, and the sticks are flying outside, you got the doors open, you got burrs on your clothes, whatever. Anyway, you end up, you know what's happening, you're going to start getting leaks. And you better be very good at finding them and patching them. Because believe me, the time I got rid of the air mattress, I think I patched it like a hundred times. I mean, I was using the bicycle repair kit, you know, the tire repair kits, you know, to patch them up. That's how very that's how good I was at patching them. But anyway, uh, one thing that I would suggest to really save a lot of that is actually get you a uh, a tarp, like a five. I think mine was a five by eight tarp that I used, just a cheap tarp from Walmart. I think it was like four dollars or five dollars. And I laid that down and then put the mattress, kept the mattress on that. And um, that seemed to eliminate a lot of the, you know, a lot of the repair, you know, on the air mattress. Uh, another thing I didn't like about it is you're driving around the country. Uh, the heat, the cold, um, even the height and elevation that you go, you'll be surprised how that affects the air in the van. And, I mean, it'll get sometimes to a point to where you you go back there and it's just about ready to pop. That's how, that's how big it's gotten. So, you know, that makes a big difference. You know, so consider that as well. So air mattresses is the cheapest, but yet it's, uh, it's, it's more maintenance. You know, you have to really uh, take care of that. Now, the memory foam, nah, don't, don't waste your money on it. Especially if you plan on going to any kind of cold climate at all. Basically, you get below 50 degrees. And you go climbing to bed and have bed. That bed's going to be rock hard, man. So, don't waste your money on that, you know. that The memory phone's nice, but boy, I tell you what. it You literally, it's, it's like rock hard. So, it's one of the most uncomfortable beds in cold weather you ever had. But, um, you know, that would be one that I wouldn't even look at. If you do get the memory foam, flip it upside down, you know, and, and sleep on the foam side of it and let the memory foam be at the bottom. That's how I use mine. And uh, it actually worked out okay, you know. But then uh, I actually ended up just going and getting a, uh, the measurement, you know, of, a, of the high density foam. And then I got the two inches, the medium density foam. And I put the two inch on top of the, on top of the four inch of the high density foam. And that mattress actually was very comfortable, believe it or not. 
Um, and then I think I had a two inch um, feather pillow topper, you know, like a bed pillow topper that you could buy. I think I got that at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. Now what I do here on mine, I have a queen size um, um, sleeping bag. Is a is for two people, you know, that's what I had. So I took the queen size sleeping bag, I took the mattress that I got from, from Big Lots, and I laid the queen size mattress inside of, I took the queen size two inch feather pillow topper and I put it inside as well zipped it all the way around sewed the zippers closed where it wouldn't come loose and wouldn't open up and then I took and I, I put it on the bed and I folded it in, in, in onto the couch and uh, then I actually took um, those uh, those ties you know the cargo ties you know, the little ratchet type cargo ties and I tied the crease in the mattress from the back to the bottom and I tied it down to the ends of my uh, to the ends of the uh, couch that I built my hand built couch and I built a big couch as heavy duty as it ain't coming apart but that's how I have it set up right now at the moment and um, that actually worked very very well it's uh, it's that um, so I've got the the comfort of the sleeping bag you know the cushiness of the sleeping bag plus I've got the two inch topper cushiness on that and then the regular mattress as well so it's actually a very very comfortable couch now so for me to sleep on there is no problem at all and I've what I would suggest if you're if you're not going to build the couch and you're just going to build the flat surface of the bed for the backs of your bed if you want to make it just that wide use it as a couch as well and then at that point what you do is you go out and you go buy like bed bath, uh, bed bath and beyond, you and you look for these big giant what they call body pillows, and get the firm, firm body pillows, and you get those in firm, really firm, and they make great backrest, you know, for a couch. They really do. They do really well. Buy a couple of them. Remember, pillows are your friend when you're living in a van. So buy as many pillows as you want. I sleep one behind me. I sleep one, you know, and uh, two of them underneath my head. I got one that I, that I hug and I put between my legs. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, I'm all propped up and comfortable to crash in for a few hours. So enjoy it. But um, that's, that's what I would suggest to do. If you're setting your van up inside on your beds, consider what you're going to use 90% of the time and learn to adapt to with what you're going to use the most because that's where you're going to be the happiest. When you go to sleep, honestly, when you lay down, it all goes away and you can learn to sleep on that van just as easy. So, you know, on that uh, couch just as easy. So uh, that's what I would suggest to do. Um, and by that way, you can get out and get started and uh, be very minimal about what you're going to spend. You don't have to cost a lot. I mean, these options here, just a few hundred dollars, and you can get set up with something very comfortable that you're going to be happy with. So uh, consider that. And I think the Lazy Boy option would be your probably your most expensive, but you can find those, you know, between two to four hundred dollars. You know, good comfortable ones. You know, that are really big, giant, fluffy ones. You know, that you can really enjoy for the rest of your life. But um, like I said, whatever you do and however you do it, remember, quality is your friend. So spend the money for the good quality. It will hold up and it will pay off when you're actually out there living in it. Because you're pretty rough on stuff when you're living in the van. So when you do your build outs, always make sure you overdo it to where, because believe me, your shelves, everything is moving. When you're driving down the highway, they're bouncing and carrying on. So you want everything built as strong as you can possibly build it. If not, six months later, you're going to be tearing it all out, doing it all over again. So don't waste your time on it. Then as you go out and you start doing your build out, you know, if you don't want just the bare walls or whatever, you know, now on the flooring, when I first did, I just went and got a remnants, carpeting remnants. Uh, and um, I think the carpeting remnants was like $30. And then I think I also found one of those rugs. You know those places that are always going out of, you know, going out of business sale, you know, for rugs? Well, around here, that's all they do is, you know, 
They go out of business every week. So they sell these big rugs. You can buy one of those and lay on the ground, you know, lay on the on the floor. Who cares? As long as it's something that's nice and warm and comfortable on your feet. You know, and you can cut it you can cover it with plywood or something, you know, to get you a smooth surface. And you can just throw one of those down and you're happy and fine. You really don't have to do a whole lot of screwing and, and attaching. So, you know, put a couple screws in it, hold it in place, and that's just about all you have to really come up with. But you'd be surprised even how cheap you could build your van out. So, you know, when you look at it, if you want colors on the walls and, you know, you want wood on the walls and things like that, that's where your cost is going to start coming in. And there's other different options even when you're doing that. Yeah, you can go with the traditional tongue and groove, you know, like all the, you know, the real high class band builds you, you see out there. But what they don't tell you, and most of them will leave out on you, is that they're spending ten, fifteen thousand dollars to build that van out. It's a lot of money. And yeah, they're nice vans, don't get me wrong. But you know what? I've seen a lot of them being broken down right after they spent all that money too. Because they're just half put together, not built properly. So you know, if you're going to waste your time in doing it, make sure you have it built correctly and properly for the movement. So don't waste your money on something that's just going to fall apart. Because you're just going to get aggravated and you're going to get angry. And then you're going to fall into depression and with having anxiety because everything is falling apart on you. And now you don't. You spend all your savings. You don't have any money left. Like I said, the thing that I look at is keep the money in the savings. It pays better. Live with what you just have to live with. Now, if you decide to go with a with a trailer and haul something, or if you have uh, you decide to go with a SUV, or you know, or not an SUV, but like a Class C or a Class B or a Class A motorhome, um, yeah, those are built to do exactly what you're doing. Those are going to give you the best life, but also you're going to look a lot of money to get up in there. And, um, you know, so just you have to sort of weigh and spend your money as wisely as you can when you're doing with that. So um, about the build outs of your van, that's about the uh, only thing that I could really suggest you um, ask for toilets, carry a five gallon bucket. You can line it with that noodle, take a noodle and slice it you know, on one side. You can line it around with that and glue it on makes a very good comfortable seat on there you can get what they call the luggable loo lid you know that goes on there um you know that's that's comfortable so i had that as well um i've even had a, i have a uh, cassette toilet right now that i use it's actually underneath the box here in between the seat of my uh, van and um, honestly i use the toilet number two in the bag three times and that was when I was not feeling well and I absolutely had to do it and I you know I was out and I was out away from a rest you know a rest area or something. Um for the cassette, since I've had a cassette, that's the longest one I've I've never even used a cassette. I've got it, it's there, it's full of water, it's ready to go. But honestly, I've never pulled it out to use it. I never had to. I've trained my system, my my body system, to go when I want to go. So in the mornings, that's when I have my cathedral, and so I'll get up and make my coffee. I'll walk into Walmart or into Starbucks or wherever the first place that I land in the morning, and that's where I go. Now, no, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to go out there and and crap in the woods with a with a shovel. But if you do use a shovel, that's all right. Nothing wrong with that. But remember, do it. Do it the correct way. Never shovel more than six inches deep and never shovel more than or less than six inches deep. Always that way. Remember, if it goes below six inches deep, it will not decompose and turn into soil. If you go above that, and you know, most likely an animal's going to dig it up and, and haul it off. Make sure you cover it up and pack it back down when you get done with it. Six inches is your key, all right? Never more, never less. So right at six inches, that's where you want to be. But um, 
that's Boy Scout stuff. You know, I used to teach all my boys. I used to teach Boy Scouts, so, you know, I taught all the boys that stuff. But, um, yeah, get out there and do what you can. Uh, like I said, there's so many different options and things. But, like I said, if I was going to go out west and stuff and actually live out in the desert and try that for a while or up in a, you know, like a state park or something for a month, well, then I would consider a little bit different. And then I would start using my cassette toilet, I'm sure. And, you know, or uh, even the five-gallon bucket method, you know. But there's other ways you can do that. you got to have a trash can, so you always got your trash can. I would just suggest just use a five-gallon bucket. You can buy them at, Walmart, at Home Depot for five bucks, I think it is. And you can even get one with the screw-on lid to where, you know, you get the type of screw-on lid that goes on it. We could seal the, even the smell in there. But even if I would use it, when I used it, I would just pull it out, bag it up, take it out of the van right after I got done. So that smell was never in my van. Um, talk about smells in your van. Yeah, living in small quarters, smoking in small quarters, all these smells, cooking in small quarters. It, they're tough. You know, it's, it's really tough, you know, for smells. So always make sure you have, you know, stuff and air fresheners and stuff that you can, you know, that you can set out. Be sure to air your van out as much as possible. The more you air out your van, the less mold and stuff you got to deal with. So remember that. So anytime you can keep it, you know, aired out on a nice, warm, you know, low humidity day, that's the best thing you could do for it. So open it up and let it breeze and let it blow out. Uh, make sure you have a, a, some kind of a venting system. Even your windows half cracked or whatever, maybe a fan. Always have something to vent your van. But uh, as for build outs, like I said, you, there's 5,000 different designs and, and ways of doing that. I look online, I'm sure you can find anything that one that might just fit your fancy. But what I suggest for you right now is to find one that fits your budget. I don't care if you're rich or poor. Always find something to where you can live within your means. There's no reason to spend a fortune on something that's really not gonna last. I'd rather you do it, you know, cheaper that way, because believe me, I'm sure you're gonna change it at least two or three times before you actually get in there and figure out exactly where you want things. It always happens. I know I've rebuilt mine five different times because it's just something about it I just didn't like. I wanted my, you know, my cup to sit over here on this side. It had to be so high. But see, as you get all this information, that's when you pull out the, you know, your measuring stick and you start measuring things and you start, you know, drawing it out and building it to fit you. So, take your time. You know, not in a big rush. Believe me, I lived the first one on the air mattress. I lived in there for almost a year. So, you're more than comfortable. The elevated bed, I lived there for... Oh, two and a half years so you know don't build something that you're going to hate and then you're going to just get discouraged being out there because you want something that you fall in love with and that's not becoming a problem now you can enjoy the life around you because you're not pissed off about the way your van's set up and you're not getting good comfortable sleeping you're not resting well you're not being able to see out or whatever it is you know, there's something that will always grab you right by the goat, you know, to make you really wonder about it. So try to eliminate all that as you can. But anyway, that's the, uh, that's the series number two. That's the, that's basically the bed situation. That's what I would recommend to do. Uh, like I said, if you need any help or anything on those, you can call me. Um, my phone number is all over my web, you know, all over my videos. I uh, don't need it. I'll try to put it down in the description. But YouTube again, once again, has changed their whole format around. Now I got to figure out. It took me 35 minutes just to figure out how to monetize my last video. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> they really make it tough on an old man, you know. I just about get it all figured out, and that's when they change everything around. I don't know why they do that. Just leave the stupid thing alone. But anyway, they make it really tough on us older guys. You know, we don't pick up on that new stuff, and it's a little bit harder for us. But anyway, uh, so I'm going to go on and post this one here, and hopefully you can get something out of that one. I think I'll talk about, um, 
electricity I want to go through that and what your options can be on that I want to your comfort level is another one that I want to talk about how you can make yourself as comfortable as you possibly can uh, on a budget also I, I had one request where they wanted me to talk about how to prep in a van so I'll try to do a prepping type video for you and we'll get into that one as well now leave in the comments of any suggestions that you have on videos that pertain to this van that you would probably like to get more in detail in and I'll be more than happy to uh, consider those and get those moved out for you to where hopefully they can help you build your van but if you did and, and, you're, and you're getting your van or if you've already got your van congratulations welcome to the van community and hope to see you out there on the road someday um, by all means my biggest thrill I, I guess you could say and the thing that I love the most is when I meet new people and especially someone that I've communicated with over time over social media and to be able to meet new people so if you would love to meet with me I am usually in Florida on the west coast around Tampa just south of Tampa area that's where I try to stay at um, if I do travel quite a bit too but you know I'll let you know if I'm ever on the road traveling but most of the time this is where I'm at if you're in this area, you're coming by, you're coming through, or you're within a couple hundred miles, you know, give me a call. I'll try my best to meet up with you and try to well, have a great time. God bless you all and hope you have a great day. Hope this, this uh, series is helping you out. Thank you.